Welcome back, fellow mutants. Or should I say, tarnished. For when we return to the world of Elden Ring, we will now be traversing the land of shadows in the footsteps of Maquella, while Maquella awaits the return of his promised lord. Before we get into this video, I just want to say that I am a long time lover of Dark Souls and Elden Ring, and this video is the beginning of my journey in sharing this with you. I am well versed in the lore of Elden Ring, and this is my interpretation. On February the 21st, Elden Ring Shadows of the Earth Tree was released. In this video, we are going to be taking a deep dive into Mesmir, the fiery demigod. On that note, let's have a rewatch of that trailer. Pure and radiant, he wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men. There is nothing more terrifying. In that forsaken place, blood must spill. Blood of your fellows. They are truly faithful. They were never saints. They just happen to be on the losing side of a war. Mother, wouldst thou truly lordship sanction in one so bereft of light? I presume you, too, are keen to know. Just what kind Mikola is doing here. Those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death in the embrace of restless flame. Come now. Touch the withered arm and travel to the realm of shadow. I will not be far behind. May we meet again. Let's move on to the fiery demigod himself, Mesmer. Those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death in the embrace of Mesmer's flame. So first we'll talk about how Mesmer is the third or fourth child of Radagon and Marga. I say third or fourth because it depends on if he includes Melna as the other child of Radagon and Marika. So Mesmir the Impaler. Mesmir meaning master and Impaler meaning someone or something that pushes a sharp object through something, especially the body of an animal or a person. So let's dive deeper into who we can speculate Mesmir is. Mesmir is a demigod, a child of Marika. We know this as it is mentioned by Miyazaki in an interview. The chair Mesmir sits upon is the same as the one shown in the fight with Margot, the Omen King, and he is on the same level as characters like Godric, Melenia, Redan, Rikard, etc. 
and is referred to as a child of Marika. Another fact we know is that as a child of Radagon and Marika, their child would be cursed due to Marika and Radagon being one in the same. They are one being. More on that in the future video. So as they are one in the same and as a child of Marika and Radagon, they would have a name beginning with M or R. They would be a demigod and they would have blonde or red hair. All of this is true for Mesmir, confirming it is most likely the child of Marika and Radagon. We also see Mesmir referring to Mother. Mother. And I think we can assume that this is Marika. So he asks her if she would truly lordship sanction. Wouldst thou truly lordship sanction? Sanction. Another word for sanction is punishment. Again, we know the Shadowlands is a place where those stripped of grace dwell. So the question I ask myself is, did Mark ascend Mesmer here to punish the flawed, to become lord of the Shadowlands? But why Mesmer? We will get into this later in the video. For now, let's take a closer look at the appearance of Mesmer. So if we look at his armor, we can see he has a chainmail style armor under his red cape. You could say it is somewhat similar to the armor worn by the exiled soldiers in Godric's castle. These soldiers also have a red cape draped around them, much like Mesimir. Another enemy with a similar cape to Mesimir is the Banished Knights with the Banished Knight helm. It is described as a thick, full set of armor covering the entire body. This helm was worn by knights who, whether by misfortune or misdeed, were forced to abandon their homes. Perhaps the deep red scarf was used to block the winds, for on the outskirts the winds bite with a stinging fierceness. And you can see the similarity in the drape cape with the same style of tassels that hang from Mesmir's. What this could tell us is that Mesmir, before he was sent to the Shadowlands, had soldiers or knights, as these exiled soldiers were not actually Godric's. They came to his castle after the shattering. Next, we'll look at his helmet. So we see the heads of two snakes at the top, and these, what I believe, look like dragon wings on the sides. On the topic of snakes and dragons, let's go deeper into that. First, let's look at dragons. In the lands between, Many events have happened that involve dragons, such as the War of Dragons and the Giants, the War of the Dragons and the Golden Order, which later formed the Dragon Cult, and the Church of Dragon Communion. So we know that the Church of Dragon Communion were of those who followed the Dragon Cult, and they were taught dragon incantations by the dragons. The cult was allowed within the Golden Order by changing the incantations to be of a golden hue although the real hues were red, and these red-hued incantations were taught in secret. So with that being said, not only do we see what looks like wings in Mesmer's helmet, but we also see wings on the serpents. And with a closer look, we see that he has a yellow eye. Now we know that those with yellow eyes are related to dragons. Now we know that those with yellow eyes are related to dragons, as those who partake in dragon communion begin to develop dragon features, such as dragon eyes. Speaking of Mesmer's eyes, we see that one is closed. Much like Rani and Melina, who have been cursed, we can also assume that this means Mesmer is cursed. And again, as a child of Marika and Radagon, we know he is most likely cursed. But what could his curse be? Well, if Mesmer did participate in dragon communion, Turning his eyes yellow, perhaps he also studied the red hued dragon incantations, and this is why Marika removed him from the lands between. If he was studying these red hued incantations, did he come across the ancient dragon god? Much like Melania, who was cursed by the god of rot, could Mesmer be cursed by the ancient dragon god? It's hard to say as we don't know much about this dragon god. But upon closer look at Mesmer, we see that the serpents that linger around Mesmer are actually part of him. They go through his body. And again, looking at Melania, 
we see how her curse of rot affected her body. Perhaps the curse of the ancient dragon god caused these serpents to pierce or impale through Mesmere. The serpent has a link to dragons, as again we see they have wings, so this could be a type of serpent dragon. We also see the flames around Mesmere could be a dragon incantation, but we will discuss this in a section where we look at his flames. With all this being said, I think it's fair to say that there is a strong possibility that Mesmere is cursed by the ancient dragon god, that these could also be serpents. So let's discuss the serpents. We see many serpent related things throughout the lands between, mainly in Volcano Manor and Mount Gilmere, such as the Temple of Igle, described as, in the Volcano Manor, you can find the Temple of Igle, which worships the serpent god Igle, who demanded blood sacrifices to nourish itself and increase its power. We know that in the lands between Rikard, Radagon, and Renala's son, before he became the Lord of Blasphemy, rediscovered the Serpent Cult, where he also discovered the ancient magma hexes of a forgotten serpent worshipping religion said to be native to the region. Rikar brought magma hexes back into the practical uses as a new sorcery. Now, perhaps this outer serpent god, again much like the god of Scarlet Rot, cursed Mesmere with snakes, hence why they are imbued in him, just like how we discussed the rot eating away at millennia. And we also know this, that snakes are seen as traitors to the Erd Tree. Could this be why Marga removed him from the lands between? An item that I think is important to mention here is the man-serpent shield. Upon a closer look, I realise this wavy circle around the shield looks very similar to the symbol we see on the back of Mesmer's cloak as well as the box heart. If you look even closer, you see a serpent in the middle, much like the one on Mesmer's helmet. A lot of people have already mentioned this about the smouldering butterfly. I've first seen this mentioned in Smoltown's video, but I also just wanted to bring it up because upon replaying the area of the Volcano Manor for this video, I noticed that the man serpents also dropped the smouldering butterfly. So there is a strong possibility it could connect to Mesmere, much like how the Aeonian butterfly represents Millennia and the Nescent butterfly represents Nequela. All three are the children of Marika and Radagon. So I think it's fair to say that there is a strong possibility that Mesmere is cursed by an outer snake god, he has connections to Mount Gilmere and possibly the man serpents. But for now, let's analyse his flames. So we're going to do this by looking at sorcery and incantations within Elden Ring. We know there is new magic to come in the DLC as Bandai Namco states Shadow of the Erdtree adds new weapons, equipment, weapon skills and magic not found in the base game Elden Ring. So Mesmer could be using a new type of magic that we haven't yet seen, or he could be using a type of magic we know of but with new spells that we haven't seen. Based on the magic in the land between, let's talk about incantations first. Dragon incantations. First of all, let's quickly recap on dragon incantations. We did discuss the dragon communion and how Mesmer could be using a source of red hued incantations, so we won't discuss much on this as we've already done so. But let's look at some similar incantations, such as Magma Breath, Theodoric's Magma and Agil's Flame. These incantations are similar to Mesmer's in the way that they are fire, and I believe the reason Mesmer doesn't turn into a worm or a dragon is that he gains power through the serpents in and around him. Okay, so now let's talk about sorcery. First, I want to discuss magma sorceries, also known as lava sorceries. This is a sorcery that originated from the volcano at Mount Gilmir, the place where Rikar discovered the ancient magma hexes of a forgotten serpent worshipping religion. So Gilmir's Fury states that this is one of the sorceries developed from the magma of Mount Gilmir, conjures a surge of magma from the earth covering the area. This sorcery is held to represent the 
fury of the volcano, but the arrogance of attempting to harness it is solely that of men and serpents. Now, this could be a big hint that Mesmer uses magma hexes as men and serpents are the ones who try to harness it. Another interesting link is the Gilmir glintstone staff, said to be a staff with a forked tip embedded with red glintstones. It enhances lava sorceries. The man serpents of Mount Gilmir draw from faith, in addition to intelligence, to enhance the potency of their sorcery. So here we see the mention of red glintstone. What is red glintstone? We see it mentioned in the Briars of Sin spell, an aberrant sorcery discovered along with red glintstone by those exiled to the north for their crimes. And in Alberich's set, said to be set with red glintstones, formed by the blood of sacrifices, strengthening thorn sorceries. And in the staff of the guilty, saying this, a heretical staff fashioned from a smouldering, withered sapling that turns the blood of sacrifices, pierced by it into glintstone. So does Mesmer use ancient magma hexes along with the use of red glintstone? Well, for now we can only speculate, but we can see many links and connections which very much implies he might. But this also leads me to my next sorcery up for discussion. Aberrant sorcery. Aberrant meaning twisted, warped or perverted, which in what we are going to discuss makes a lot of sense. And from the trailer we could say that the magic in Mesmer's hand looks somewhat similar to the sign for aberrant sorcery. Now upon looking into aberrant sorcery we know it relates to the blood star. Again we know it was discovered along with red glintstone by those exiled to the north for their crimes. So let's look at some of the items that focus on briars and aberrant sorcery. So we have the briar of sin spell and the briar of punishment spell. We already see a link in the word punishment which we know Mesmer refers to in the trailer. And again, sanction means punishment. Even though his spell looks somewhat similar to the Briars of Aberrant Sorcery, but in his flames we see no thorns. So could this be a different type of Aberrant Sorcery? Apart from the act of punishment, how else might Aberrant Sorcery link to Mesmer? Well, if Radagon is the so-called father of Mesmer, we see some links of Briars in connection to Radagon. An example of Radagon and Briars, or Thorns, is the seal he creates over the entrance to the Ur Tree. And if we look at his statue, at the bottom of it we also see these Thorns, or Briars, similar to the Staff of the Guilty. Now, what does this say about Radagon? Seeing as he is Marika, this could be the darker side of Marika, one that seeks to punish those who are impure or stripped of grace. If this is who Mesmer is referring to when he says mother, then we see that Marika wishes to see the impure punished. One last point I want to make is how the punished or guilty are always wrapped in thorns, such as the exiled soldiers at Godric's castle, Elamir, who we see has these briars around his armour, and lastly the thorn fire sorcerers, who also have thorns wrapped around them. To wrap this section up on sorcery and incantations, we can speculate that Mesmer could be using a form of one of these three mediums. Dragon communion incantations, magma hexes or love sorcery, or aberrant sorcery. Before we finish up, I want to mention a catacomb we find in the lands between, the Impaler Catacombs. In its description, it states as follows. Once used to store the bodies of the dead, it is now crawling with imps. One of the items we can find in the Impaler Catacombs is a prattling peat, saying, please help. Perhaps a call from one who had suffered the flames of Mesmer. And with that all being said, this brings us to our final conclusion for this video. Mesmer the Impaler is a demigod and son of Marika. 
he uses a type of fire incantation or sorcery which brings death to those who cross his flame. He practiced dragon communion and as a result has dragonite eyes, with one eye closed leading us to assume he is cursed, possibly from the ancient dragon god or the serpent god. He is imbued with winged serpents and he lives in the Shadowlands. So, my last note is that this is Miyazaki. The one thing we can 100% be sure of is that this DLC is going to be incredible. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, this is all speculation based on research I've done. I've been working non-stop on this video since the DLC trailer came out on the 21st. I worked so hard on this and I would really appreciate a like on this video and if you're interested in seeing more of my content, please hit the subscribe button. That being said, I will be releasing a video that does a deep dive into the Shadowlands. Thank you all very much for watching. Farewell.